YouTube internet, welcome back to another episode of Cassar Industries. Hope everyone is doing fine and dandy. Today, we are going to finish the manual conversion on the Calais. So let's jump inside it and start getting some things apart. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna start by being inside the car. Oh, by the way, I uh, <laughs> I know it's pointless, but I fitted the boost gauge that I had in, the, um, in my silver wagon, my work car, which has been only hooked up to VAC for God knows how long. And I just thought I'll put it in here just for fun. It's for fun. Anyway, so we're going to start in here by sort of removing the center console trim and getting rid of the transmission shifter. Um, I can't remove this trim completely because someone, I'm not saying who, has put these gauges here. So I'm just going to flip this out of the way. Um, power button will be deleted as that does nothing now. Uh, traction control button does still work. So I'll need to find somewhere to put that. Don't really know. What we're going to do in that regard but we'll figure that out so yeah we just go through and get all this unclipped um just sort of unclip it from here and it all just sort of pulls out and you unplug the window switch so we'll get all this out and have a look see what's underneath all right so we've got this trim out of the way i've just sort of tied it up to the mirror just to sort of hold it there i don't want it all resting on the wires there are four screws here 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 and here to retain this large piece of the center console to the shifter quadrant i believe that's what it's called um, so now we'll go through and remove the rest of the screws because i want to try and get this whole console piece out of the way just to give myself a bit more room i uh, know there are a couple of screws underneath this mat in here as well so yeah we'll just go through and sort of get this all pulled out now all right got the console out so that's sort of what it looks like now this is all sort of free and loose ish so we'll just go through and unplug all of this stuff get this whole thing out of the way find out what we're going to do it's quite messy under here no way yes two dollar fifty this car is paying for itself oh and a lighter that'll come in not handy so um yeah sweet as i'm just going to go through and give this a bit of clean because it's quite grotty down the sides of the seats where the console was so i'm just going to give it a quick vacuum and get this thing out of the way all right guys that's as far as we can go inside the car so this is all sort of pulled apart as much as it can there are four nuts underneath the transmission tunnel that we need to undo and then this whole auto trans shifter will just come out um so that's that uh with the traction control button i've just clipped it into here so it just sort of looks like that um and the black rubber square thing that normally goes there i've just cut the corner out of it to sort of clear the button so once i sort of drop that back down that'll sort of clip in that type situation with the wiring for that traction control it sort of comes into this little patch harness here um, out of here came the wiring for the traction control button which is this one and also there was another one for the power button and also a little illumination light to light up the auto trans shifter and i've just deleted what we don't need and just sort of taped it back together so that sort of went onto there originally so now it'll just sort of lay down under the console and plug onto the button so now we can get it up in the air and start taking everything out from underneath all right so before we get the car in here i just want to prepare the clutch um i said in a previous video that this was a second hand XCD clutch it's actually not i told a lie i made a mistake uh this is by a company called pro clutch uh, it is a heavy duty clutch still with quite a bit of life left on it so still quite a bit of meat left on the uh on the disc there so i'm going to go ahead and reuse it i'm just going to get a little buff sort of buzz buzz wheel here and just clean up those two services and I was able to find a new thrust bearing as well so we'll throw this into the gearbox because this one is whereas this one is mm. so we'll throw that in the gearbox get that cleaned up and we'll bring the clutch ah the clutch bring the car in here and start pulling it apart All right, so I got those things cleaned up. So there you go there. Oh, Clutch Pro, Pro Clutch, Clutch Pro, Potato, Potato, whatever. So yeah, I've got these two services cleaned up. So what I do is I basically go over it with a sort of fairly coarse pad and just sort of clean everything. And then I switch over to a finer pad and I sort of do like a swirling motion as I go all the way around. No, it is not as good as getting the flywheel machined. 
um, but you know it's going to be good enough for what we're using it for then I went through and I just sort of cleaned out all of these edges on the clutch disc as well so as far as I'm concerned that is good to go all right so now we'll get the car in here um, get it set up on the hoist and we'll get to pulling the auto out Alrighty, this will be the last time this thing moves with an automatic in it. Oh, that's weird. It shows that that's all flickering on the camera. That's not, but anyway. We will have an airbag light on now too, by the way, because of the uh, thing disconnected. So I've just had an idea of something that I want to do before I start pulling the auto out So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the build series on this car If you're not, please go back and watch it uh, But way back in the piece we fitted a very large automatic transmission cooler to this car Which is down in there um, And obviously now going manual we don't need a, a transmission cooler But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that into world's biggest power steering cooler So I'm going to delete the power steering bar, cooler bar that's on the front can't really see it but it is down in there i'll lift the car up and show you um, but we're going to delete the bar and disconnect the transmission cooler lines and hook them the power steering lines up to that cooler so i'm going to do that first get the power steering system bled up um, so then it's one less thing to worry about once you know it's all back together so you can get a bit more of an idea of what i'm talking about here so there's the transmission cooler up in there and then this bar here is what's used to cool the power steering so what we're going to do is basically, this is where we joined it, we'll pinch one of those barbs and connect it up to this hose here. That one there which goes up to the reservoir uh, and then we'll connect the other one basically onto here which is the other power steering cooler line. Um, so yeah, it's going to be as simple as that, just sort of like take them off from there and connect them up to here. Um, yeah, and the reason why I'm doing that is high RPM does create quite high temperatures in the power, si power steering system uh, and high and oil with a high temperature is what causes leaks. So, yeah, we'll just do that just because. And, um, yeah, then we'll get on to the main event. All right, it took way longer than I wanted it to, but the power steering cooler is out of the way now. Uh, the ambient air temperature sensor, I've just drilled a hole and just cable tied it there. Ran a new line, went onto the power steering hard line, um, and then I used that joiner there um, to go up to the power steering reservoir. And this one here... Um, that's I've just that's for the automatic transmission. I've just looped them together just so I can start the car just for a couple of minutes to bleed up the power steering system. So um, yeah, that's that. We'll just drop it down, fill it up with power steering oil, and we'll get onto it. So it has got the power steering all filled up. It is a little bit frothy and aerated at the moment, but that will settle down over time. Now the next thing I'm going to do is these two transmission cooler lines that I've looped together down here. I'm now going to disconnect them and point them into this. Um, oil tray oil bucket down there and then I'm going to start the car up and let the pump inside the auto pump as much transmission fluid out as we can saves us pulling the pan off and draining the auto um, it's just going to save me a bit of time so we'll do that and then we can get stuck into the nitty gritty so that's the transmission side of things drained so now we're ready to sort of get on to actually pulling this auto out now before we lift the car up and start taking things out from underneath uh, there are four bolts that I like to do from the top first so the first one is sort of down on the side of the block there um, there is a 
um, bracket for the power steer, uh, sorry, for the automatic transmission cooler pipes. So there's a bracket that holds that to the side of the block with a 13 mil bolt. There is a bracket coming off the automatic transmission dipstick tube. Uh, it, uh, gets bolted to the back of the driver's head also with a 13 mil bolt. And then the two top bell housing bolts, I find are much easier to get to from the top. You can just sort of see it there in the center of the screen. Um, there's two 19 mil bolts. So I sort of just do one from each side of the engine bay. Get those two 19 mil bolts out first before we go underneath. So we'll get all of that stuff out first and yeah, we'll get the car up and get going. All right, so I've got the two top bell housing bolts out, which are just chilling there. I've got the dipstick tube bracket bolt and the automatic transmission cooler bolt out, which are those two there. I've just whipped the transmission dipstick out, which is just hanging there. So yeah, up we go. Rightio, so the plan is now to obviously get the auto out. So what I've done first things first is I've just taken a sawzall to the transmission cooler pipes that are there and just sort of cut them back to there and I've pulled them all out the front of the car. So they're, they're completely deleted. So basically to get the auto out of these, um, they're not too complicated to do at all. Normally I can get the autos out of these in about an hour, but it has been quite a while since I've done one. So we'll see what happens. But basically you've got these plastic covers here and here. So you need to remove them, remove the starter motor. Starter motor is different auto to manual, but we'll cover that once it's all out. We need to undo the shifter linkage um, then inside here there are torque converter bolts so we need to get inside there spin the motor from the crank and undo the torque converter bolts tail shaft out so the whole thing will come out so we'll unbolt it from here and get the whole thing out of the car center bearing gets unbolted then the cross member and then you've got the actual transmission bolt itself so you've got one two three four more bolts holding the auto in so we'll go through and get all that done pull the auto out and yeah let's do it alrighty auto is out as you can see so the auto is just chilling on the floor down here it was fun lifting that off the transmission jack I tell you what the manuals are considerably lighter than the autos too so that's that um, the only thing I've done after that is I deleted the breather there is a breather that sort of goes up in here that connects to the top of the auto. Um, the manual just has a little breather cap on the top of the gearbox. So now we can go through and remove the flex plate because um, that's obviously going to be replaced with a clutch. I do have a rear main seal as well, uh, just the rubber seal. Um, I've got one in stock, so I might just throw one of them in while I'm at it. And then we'll remove the starter motor and change that over to the manual one. So I'll show you what all that's about. So yeah, first things first, we'll just pull this off, pull the starter out. Um, yeah, I guess that's it really. All right, that's all apart. Got the flex plate off, starter motors out, taken the old rear main seal out and put a new one in. Again, I know it wasn't leaking, but I didn't want to, while it's all apart, now's the time to do it because there's nothing worse than it starting to leak and getting oil on the clutch or whatever. So just sort of did that while I'm there. So here is the, this is the auto starter. Uh, this is a manual starter. I also had this starter motor here, I thought it was out of a V6 Commodore manual, but it's, I've compared it and it's actually quite different, so I don't know where that's from. But anyway, so this is the one we've just taken out, uh, and this is the manual one here, so the main difference is, size-wise they're a tiny bit different, but it's the tooth count, that's the main difference. So we'll bang that in, uh, pop the flywheel on, um, yeah, move on to the next, I guess. Alright, so manual starter motor's in, but I've realised I've made a little bit of a boo-boo. I don't actually have a spigot bush to go into the back of the crank. So a spigot bush is what, there's an input shaft from the gearbox that slides in here, uh, in the back of the crank, and there's a spigot bush that um, sort of goes in here, and then the input shaft goes into the middle of the spigot bush. So it supports the input shaft. Have ordered one, will have one in the morning, so there's not a heck more I can do until then. Um, I could probably bolt the starter motor on, uh, sorry, starter motor starter motor is on i could probably bolt the flywheel on which i might do i don't know we'll see um but i'm just going to knock this out this is the transmission automatic transmission shifter i'll just turn the light around so that's just got four nuts that hold that on so i've undone that they just push it up through the floor and it gets replaced with this guy and this is just what the um 
manual key stick pokes through. So I want to swap that over real quick and then we'll figure out what we're doing. So I did end up going ahead and putting the flywheel on. Um, flywheel bolts are torque to yield. So you do need to replace them every time you remove them. Torque to yield means the bolt stretches as you tighten it. Torque spec on these is around 20 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. Proper way to do these is to tighten it to 20 Newton meters with a torque wrench and then use a dial gauge to go 90 degrees. I don't have a dial gauge with me. So what I did is I put a paint mark on the bolt when they're at the top and I just tighten them until they were at the right hand side. So that's what I've done there. And I've also changed over this thing in the floor. So that's pretty much as far as I can go today. Um, tomorrow morning, when I get that spigot bush, we can keep going. Morning guys, back at it this morning. So I've got my spigot bush here. So that knocks into the back of the crankshaft there. And then the input shaft off the gearbox goes into there. But before I knock that in, something that I actually forgot to do, which I had every intention to do, is I want to put dowels in the flywheel. So if you see these holes here, so on factory manual cars, they are drilled into the back of the crankshaft. Automatics, they are not. You can run the conversions without running the dowels, um, but I have seen flywheel bolts snap as a result. So what you need to do is, these are eight mil holes. So you drill um, the back of the crankshaft through the flywheel using the flywheel as a, as a bit of a guide. So you drill that into the back of the crankshaft and then you knock the dowel in. So I just went down to the local bolt shop. Uh, he was selling these in a pack of six. These are a tiny bit too long, so I do need to cut these down a little bit. So that's what the dowels look like there. So these are eight mil. So what I basically am gonna do is start drilling those holes with an eight mil drill bit. And once it's started, I'll step it down to about a seven and a half mil drill bit. Um, so it's a really nice tight fit when you go to knock it in. And I'll put a bit of Loctite on the dowels as well. So yeah, we'll get those knocked in and then we'll put the spigot in um, and then we can put the clutch disc on, on pressure plate. Right guys, dowels are installed. Got the spigot bearing installed as well. A little tip for you guys, if you don't want to go too deep with your drilling, put a bit of tape around your drill bit that'll sort of stop it. Did not want to go through the whole way of the crank, otherwise it will push oil past these dowels. I've also put some high strength Loctite on those dowels before I drove them in. I probably should have cut them a tiny bit shorter because they do stick out a couple of mil, but they are underneath the head of the bolts anyway. All right, so now clutch disc and pressure plate. Excellent, we have a clutch officially. So that's all tightened up. Torque specs on the pressure plate bolts are the number two setting on the Milwaukee 3.8 rattle gun. And once that's done, you flick it to number three and give it one more hit. So if you don't have a clutch alignment tool either, um, you've got these little windows in the side of the pressure plate. And what you can do is you can actually just feel the lip of the clutch disc in comparison to the pressure plate. Just make sure that's sort of even all the way around. That's sort of how I did it. Uh, but then I went through my toolbox and found this old clutch alignment tool, um, which ends up being the same spline and same size. So just slide straight in and out really easily. So now we can go ahead and finally throw the gearbox in. All right, guys, we have a gearbox. It's all installed. Got all of the bell housing bolts in, including the uh, ones at the top there, which I got from the top when the auto was in it because there's a lot more room now. I was able to get them both from under here. I got the clutch slave cylinder line mounted and hooked up. Cross member bolts are in. I did have to get some bolts for this bracket under the floor here for the shifter, but the shifter's gone through the hole. To get it in, I did need to remove this plate again that we put in before that the shifter sticks through, and I also had to remove the oxygen sensors as well, just to give me a bit more room to swing things. But yeah, that's all done. So now it's just a matter of just going through and smashing it all back together, throw the tail shaft in, connect up all the wiring. I'm even thinking I might make up a couple of, um, just a couple of brackets off the exhaust here to pick up these mounts. Don't know, we'll see. We'll see how bothered I can feel. And we'll also drop it down and start getting things put to back together from the top. So yeah, I'm just gonna crank into it now and just try and get this thing done. Well guys, we've gone as far as we can under here. I've connected all of the wiring, speedo sensor, reverse gear. We've bled up the clutch. Clutch has bled up really, really good. Um, but there is one quite large problem. 
uh, we don't have a tail shaft that fits. <laughs> so the sedan one is, is quite a bit too long. So I've got the tail shaft that came with the conversion and the one that came out of the car is here. So the sedan one obviously will still fit from the differential to the tail shaft center bearing mounting holes, which are here. Um, but if I use the sedan front half, it's way too short. It will finish about here. Um, and if I use the one that came in the conversion, it's way too long because the conversion was actually out of a ute, not a sedan. Um, went back over the messages that I had with the guy that I bought the kit from and he did actually mention that and it's just something that I completely overlooked. So I'm on the hunt for a tail shaft now, but there's not really much I can really do about it. I have put, started the car and it all sounds really good. There's no abnormal noises. Um, I've run it through the gears and the yoke here spins in every gear uh, and also in reverse um, but i don't actually know if there's any oil in the gearbox so what i'm going to do now is just crack the drain plug well actually i'll crack the the fuel plug always see if you can loosen your fuel plug before you remove your drain plug there's nothing worse than removing that and finding it you can't get that off so we'll loosen that drain that dump out whatever's in it and we'll throw some fresh stuff in it there we go we did actually it was full of oil Get all this stuff out. Yuck. Definitely needed to be changed. She's quite dirty. So we'll just let that drain for a while. Oh, it's as drained as it's going to get. As far as gearbox all goes, we're going to put some Penrite Pro Gear, Pro Gear uh, Full Synthetic 7585. Just because I've got it in stock. The Pro Gear stuff is really, really good. Um, and I'm also going to put a bottle of sauce in it as well. Uh, so this is some hot sauce. This new line smooth shift additive. This is really good if um, you've got like synchros and stuff that are getting a bit notchy or gears that are slightly noisy. This is a really, really good additive, this G70. Uh, that is, of course, until all of the synchros and gears end up on the floor. So we'll throw this in, fill it up with some fresh stuff that don't take much, about a litre and a half, I think. Um, and yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for under here. All right, we're done. That's all full of oil. Some fresh stuff is in there. So yeah, so that's basically all we can do. And now I'm gonna be on the hunt for a tail shaft. So hopefully by the time you guys watch this video, cause it'll probably go to air in, I don't know, a week or two. Um, hopefully I've got it sorted by then. Uh, but now I'm gonna drop it down, get all the inside back together. Just why not? Oh, this is the gear knob I got by the way. So yeah, that's the gear knob I got. It's the same finish as the hydraulic handbrake. So I'm gonna whack that on. I don't have a gear boot with the conversion, but I do have a universal one here, so I might just see if I can make that fit. But anyway, we'll just drop it down and get into it. Well, that's how that's come out with the gear knob and the boot on there. That gear boot was way too small for that hole, so I've just drilled half a dozen holes and sort of cable tied it in place and stretched it as good as I could. Um, but yeah, better than having an open hole, I guess. Good enough for what we're using it for anyway. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for this episode. Sorry, I was not able to finish it. Um, not my fault, I guess. There's not much I can do without a tail shaft. I really did wanna get the whole thing done and try and take it for a bit of a test drive. Even bought an unregistered vehicle permit for it to take it for a test drive. Um, but you know, it wasn't meant to be and that's okay. But at least we got like 99.897 something percent of the way there. Um, so yeah, that, that's that. So now you've seen how to convert a uh, V6 Commodore from auto to manual. If you like what you're seeing, guys, like what you're watching, please remember to like and subscribe. Also, um, follow us on our socials on Facebook and Insta. And until I see you in the next video, be good, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon.